Hi everyone, Hani Habi here, welcome to another video. If you are new here, please go check my other videos. Are you guys ready? Let's begin. As you see, today I have got my hands on this beast of laptop. So, let's unbox this bad boy and review it. The Lenovo Legion 5 Pro is an excellent laptop in so many ways. The main draw is the 16-inch 1610 screen, which is bright and beautiful, even if just standard gamut. The appeal doesn't end there either. The build quality is excellent, the battery life is above average, and the performance is about as good as it gets at this weight class, plus the price is right too. I've been anticipating this one for a while as it has been released for a few months in other parts of the world and just finally came in stock. On paper, it's a lot of what I've been looking for. Good screen, powerful GPU, stylish and yet not gamer-looking design, and some upgrade options. My main concerns were with the overall size of it and the weight. I am coming from a Razer Blade 15 after all, so good build quality was definitely on my list of desires. After a couple weeks of usage, I must admit that I'm very pleased with what Lenovo has to offer here. It doesn't have the flashy RGB and compact design that my Razer Blade has, but the 16-inch screen and powerful GPU more than make up the difference. Of course, it's not a unicorn, there's a couple things I don't care for, such as the keyboard feedback and a trackpad that's just slightly too far to the left. But these are small issues, and I think this laptop will be on the top of a lot of buyers lists. With the exception of the 16-inch screen, the overall case design and build quality is probably my favorite part of this laptop. It's just plain excellent. Throughout my use, I didn't notice any creaks or abnormalities that made it difficult or frustrating to handle. Opening the lid is a simple one-finger effort and the lip sticks out plenty enough to locate with your finger. But don't be fooled, this hinge is solid and won't wobble a bit, even if you try and shake the entire unit. The lid is rock solid as well, as I detected no flex even from adjusting the lid at the corners. Under the hood is a full-sized keyboard and large trackpad, which will be covered in much more detail in a bit. Above it is a large 16-inch 1610 screen with very small bezels. The bottom bezel is a little bit larger, but very appealing to me, as it's probably half the size of most other gaming laptops available. Centered above the screen is a small webcam, however, there are no biometrics with this one. The logos on this model are both classy and subtle well at least the ones under the hood are. The Legion logo underneath the screen is black embossed lettering on black plastic, which is invisible in most lighting conditions. And the Lenovo engraved plate on the corner of the palm rest is small and yet very nice looking in my opinion. Too bad they ruined my first impression with a bunch of ugly stickers, but at least these can easily be peeled off. One thing that really caught me off guard was how far back the screen went, and not in a good way. Fact is, I fully expected this panel to fold back 180 degree like in the product pictures on their website. This is very deceiving if you ask me, so please see below for the maximum angle you can get on this unit. It's not that bad of an angle, but I would have preferred that angled plastic piece not be there and they just let it go all the way back. I have no idea why that plastic piece is there other than to be a backstop, it doesn't seem to do anything else. The exterior construction is primarily made of aluminum, but the palm rest area and the vents are made of durable plastic components. The entire unit feels premium, including the plastic pieces, as they are all over molded onto the aluminum bottom plate, which is firmly clipped into the chassis and secured by screws. All this effort leads to a solid design with no creaking or flex, so it was worth the effort. The metal exterior has a matte finish and is gray in color, which I've grown to love for a few reasons. First of all, it's unique. Most gaming laptops are black, and I certainly don't want to experiment on how well I can dirty up an all-white design over time. Gray is the perfect in-between color, which I liked on both this and the Asus G15. This one more so, since it doesn't have a thousand tiny holes to collect dust. The gray matte finish is also a good balance where you maintain grip strength, but doesn't show every oil that's in my fingertips. Even after a couple weeks, it still looks great and I haven't had to wipe it down once. I can't say this for most black laptops, including my old razor blade. The lid is pretty plain looking, with a couple accent lines on the edges. There's a Y logo on the back, which is a little flashy, but acceptable to me. 
I don't care too much for the backlighting on it, but it can easily be turned off by pressing Fn plus L. Once done, it looks a lot more subtle. This could pose as a professional-looking laptop, in my opinion, with the light off though. Plenty of I.O. on this unit. Starting on the left, there's a single USB-C port, along with the headphone-microphone combo jack. On the left is a single USB-A port. Right next to that is a cool little switch that physically disconnects your webcam when not in use. What a great idea! The remainder of the I.O. is in the back of the laptop. You get three additional USB-A ports, another USB-C port, this one supporting PD charging, an HDMI 2.1 port and Ethernet. Unfortunately, there's no Thunderbolt on this unit. No card reader either. There's also a proprietary power connection on the back. I have zero complaints about it not being the standard barrel connection, this is way better. It's both robust and easy to connect as it's also reversible. It takes a reasonable amount of force to pull out, but not too much. The bottom panel isn't too fancy, but I actually prefer it this way. There are some very good foot pads on this unit too. They are very grippy, both by the hand and on the surfaces. There's ample ventilation for the intakes too. The entire cover is held in place by clips and Phillips screws. So to summarize, huge thumbs up from me on the design of this laptop. It feels premium, even though it's not all metal. Having no creaks in the casing or hinge really goes a long way for me, plus it just looks very nice overall. I honestly wouldn't change a thing, except maybe remove the lid logo and go back to the old one. The keyboard on this model is okay. I feel like the keys are a little on the mushier side, as it doesn't take a lot of force to depress the keys. The key travel is decent enough though, and the longer I suit it, the better I got at typing on it. What sticks out to me is how quiet it is. None of the keys make any noise with the exception of the spacebar, but even that is pretty quiet. The keys are all plastic and have a concave curvature to them, making typing easier in my opinion. I've struggled with soft-touch keyboards in the past where I tend to hit the corner of the keys and get no response. This curvature seems to help you center your keystrokes. It's a full keyboard layout with a numpad on this model. It's interesting, because the numpad has smaller keys than the rest of the keyboard, but I actually like it. It's a better solution than cramping all of the keys together. The price you pay is the main keyboard is slightly offset to the left. I barely noticed a problem with it. The layout is also very normal, well at least to me. There really isn't a single key missing or out of place. I'd especially like having normal and offset arrow keys back. The function keys have a lot of useful tools as well, like the snippet tool, calculator, and a dedicated alt-tab button. It's been a while since I opted to have FN lock on, which this also has a key for. For RGB, you get four zone illumination on this model. Which is great. The trackpad is also just okay. It's plastic so you won't get the smooth feeling that you get with glass trackpads. It tracks well though, and I had no issues with how accurate it was. Gestures worked very well and the integrated buttons on the corners worked just as I would have expected them to. I typically use single and double taps for left and right clicks. Zero issues there either. Where I struggled most with the trackpad is the size and location. Since there's a numpad, it's not centered on the laptop. This means your left hand will be a little cramped than on a laptop without a numpad. And in my case, my left palm was constantly hitting the upper left corner of the trackpad for the first few days of use. It's not a huge deal breaker, as it only moves my mouse pointer a little every now and then. But it is annoying, it's not like I have this problem on other laptops. Your mileage may vary depending on the size of your hands though. After a little investigating, most competitor trackpads are actually aligned or really close to the left edge of the spacebar. Had Lenovo done this, I think it would have been perfect. Arguably, the main draw to this laptop is the unique 16-inch screen. It's an unusual size, and it's because it comes with an uncommon 16-10 aspect ratio. The resolution is 2560 by 1600, offering more than 10% extra vertical space than a traditional 16 9 screen. 
At this screen size and resolution, the visuals are fantastic. The viewing angles are excellent, just like most other modern IPS screens out there. What really stood out to me was the peak brightness, being so close to 500 nits. This made a big difference when using the laptop next to a bright window. I still don't think it's enough to battle glare from direct sunlight, but I don't use my laptop outside much anyway. It's interesting seeing the brightness settings on this model, mainly because of how drastic they fall off between 80 to 100%. I found myself using 60% for typical use in low lit rooms, where on most other laptops it would be 30%. While gaming, I almost exclusively kept it at 90%, mainly because 100% was too bright. But having that extra 150 plus nits was perfect for those times I was typing next to my bright dining room window. The screen refresh rate is 165 Hz, which to me is more than enough speed for productivity and most gaming needs. Especially paired with a 3070 GPU, I think this is a good balance of refresh rate. You can also switch it to 60 Hz if you wanted to save on some battery life a little. One thing I was kind of hoping for was more color space on the panel. It's only 100% sRGB, which sounds kind of weird to say, considering this time last year almost every panel was not anything higher. But after seeing the 100% DCI-P3 panels such as that on the Asus Zephyrus G15 and M16 and on the Alienware M15 R5, I'm a little envious and wanted on this machine. Another added feature to this panel is the fast response time. You have to turn it on though. In Lenovo Vantage, there's a toggle called Overdrive that will lower the response time to 3 milliseconds when turned on. I have no idea what it is with it off, but it is noticeable on fast-paced games, for sure. You'll probably just want to leave it on if you game a lot. I honestly have no complaints on this panel. The 16-10 aspect ratio is also pretty nice to have. I didn't realize just how much I would like it until I saw it in person. Not only is it good looking for productivity stuff, it also suits well for games. It just costs a little in performance compared to a standard 16-9 screen, due to the extra pixels. Hardware and performance The Legion 5 Pro comes with a Ryzen 7 5800H CPU, which is an octa-core processor that boosts up to 4.4 GHz. It's not only fast, but very power efficient at lower power modes, and is pretty much one of the more desirable CPUs out there in the laptop space these days. The Legion 5 Pro utilizes a unique cooling solution, consisting of a mixture of large heat sinks, some heat pipes and a pair of large fans. It works well, as it tames the Ryzen 7 5800H better than most of the other Ryzen laptops I've been testing. The thermals are strictly controlled by the Lenovo Vantage software, which you only get three options to choose from. Balanced mode offers the best balance between quiet fans and decent performance. TDP will be allowed to hit 46 watt, while TGP will hover around 115 watt. In this mode, my fans peaked at 48 dB. Performance mode will increase your TGP up to 140 watt and will allow the CPU to boost at 60 watt. In this mode, your fans will operate the same, but when you game, the fans will get much louder than before. For example, in performance mode, I reached peak fan noises of 57 dB, while in balanced mode, I only hit 48 dB for the same game. But I also saw a performance increase to 72 frames per second over 66 frames per second. Pick your poison. Quiet mode is noticeably better on the fan noise, however your TDP gets limited to a mere 10 to 12 watt. Your TGP stays at 115 watt though, so if you're playing a game that doesn't require much CPU usage, you might get good results with less fan noise. In this mode, the fans peaked at 42 dB. Quieter, but not exactly quiet. As you can see from all three performance modes, the CPU stays at some pretty good temperatures. Having temps average at 84 degrees in performance mode isn't bad at all. And it gets even better in balanced or quiet mode. GPU temps are also well under control. As for external temperatures of the chassis, I took a number of measurements while using the laptop normally, and again while gaming for an extended period. The gaming loads were hot, as expected. Really though, pretty much all gaming laptops one inch thick and below get hot like this. 
A lap desk is certainly recommended if you plan on playing with this on the couch. I was pleased with the temps during normal use though. It's a lot cooler than I expected and it's mainly because the CPU fan stays at a low speed practically all the time. The constant air circulation does a lot to keep the chassis cool and the CPU at low temps. Fan noise hovers around 32 dB, which is really fine. Now, for the other stuff. The Wi-Fi module is the Intel AX200, which has performed well on other laptops I've tested. This is no exception. I experienced no drops in connection the entire time I used it either. The module comes with Bluetooth 5.2. The sound from the speakers is fine. Cranked all the way up, it can reach amplitudes as high as 80 dB, which is good enough for streaming a show or something. The mids and highs sound just okay, but the bass is limited to as low as 100 Hz. Even so, the sound is decent for movie streaming or watching YouTube. Just don't expect your favorite song to sound like it does on some quality headphones or speakers. The best part about this webcam is the fact there's a kill switch to disable it. Call me crazy, but I always wonder about these webcams pointing at my face all day, so I'm king of digging having a switch to physically disable it when not needed. The Legion 5 Pro has an 80 wear battery, which is a pretty decent size. Judging from the inside, it doesn't look like they had any more room for something bigger either. In order to get the best out of the battery life, you need to enable Optimus. By default, the iGPU is disabled and G-Sync is on, so in order to enable Optimus, you need to go into Lenovo Vantage and check Hybrid Mode, which is the MUX switch. After a reboot, Optimus will be on and the iGPU will be used. Pretty impressive battery life, for a gaming laptop. I was able to type a pretty good amount of this review and do a lot of other stuff on a single charge. Needless to say, I wasn't disappointed. I've read other reports of middling battery life. I'm not sure how to respond to that though, because I think these results are pretty decent considering the hardware involved. Gaming laptops in general usually have awful battery life, so this is refreshing to see. Perhaps they also didn't know you could turn the iGPU on, it makes a huge difference. The power brick is 300 watt, which is more than enough to power both the CPU and GPU on this machine. It's interesting that it's the exact same size as the one I had for the Alienware M15, only 60 watt more. It's not very compact at all. It fits in my bag, but it's too wide to fit in my usual spot that I usually put chargers. My final thoughts on the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. When you get right down to it, the Legion 5 Pro is an excellent laptop in so many ways. Of course the main draw is the 16-inch 1610 screen, which is both bright and beautiful, but also unique to just a select few laptops at the time of this review. I wish it was the high gamut panel like on the Asus Zephyrus M16, but it's still better than almost everything else out there. The appeal doesn't end there either. The build quality is excellent, the battery life is above average and the performance is about as good as it gets at this weight class. And the price is right too. At $1,900 pricing, it's hard to beat, knowing that most of the boxes are pretty much checked off. Bottom line. When it comes to performance, the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro is right up there with most competitors, but it really sells itself with its strong keyboard and display combo. This laptop is on the more expensive end, selling for upwards of $1,600 depending on your configuration if you can find it in stock but that money will buy you an exceptionally comfortable ThinkPad-style keyboard and a 1610 screen with a slightly higher than 1440p resolution. So, if all you want is high performance, you might do better with competitors like the Alienware M15 Ryzen Edition R5, which almost mirrors the Legion 5 Pro in specs, but is cheaper thanks to a lower resolution 1080p screen. But if you want a laptop that feels premium all around, the Legion 5 Pro earns its price tag, while still coming in cheaper than extremely high-end options like the $2,560 Razer Blade Pro 17. Should you buy this laptop? Yes, you do. It's a beast of a machine and it deserves every little penny. That was it for me guys. I hope you loved watching this video. If you did, please, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I see you guys next time. Peace.